Hello and welcome to Interview, a production of the Government Information Service. I am Johnny B. St. Joseph. Now, over the last few weeks, we have been joined by representatives from the Ministry of Health who have been giving us some insight into the importance of breastfeeding. And I'm joined once again by a representative from the Ministry of Health in the form of Nurse Shirlene Duncan, who is actually a family nurse practitioner. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for inviting me. Brilliant. Now, today we're going to be touching on the subject of um, breastfeeding and support, yeah? Now, this is the first time I've actually even thought of breastfeeding and support as a subject. So tell me exactly what exactly is breastfeeding support? Yes, I think it's uh, maybe a new term to several people, but it has been going on for a number of years, but it didn't, they basically didn't know how to say what it was. Okay. So breastfeeding support, this involves a number of professionals as well as the supportive persons in the woman's life, mm -hmm. a woman who is breastfeeding, who provides encouragement to promote exclusive breastfeeding as well as, well as continuing to breastfeed mm -hmm. throughout the breastfeeding journey. Okay. So th those persons are there as a team to help her, to encourage her to initiate breastfeeding, to encourage her to continue breastfeeding, and also to help her along the way with all the challenges that she may face. Okay, all right. Now something uh, in what some of the, um, something that you sent me, one of the notes you sent me, is um, when you actually said what breastfeeding support could actually um, entail, there was a reference individualized support, breastfeeding support. What do you mean by individualized exactly? Okay, so every individual is different. Mm -hmm. So some may need more support than others and some may need um, just, you know, they just may need something brief, but others may need to, you need to go, go more in depth with them or right. you may need to be there more often for them and so on. So when, it, when we say individualized, it means that each individual is seen as a specific person with specific needs, and so you address that need based on the individual. Okay, brilliant, all right. Um, so when exactly would breastfeeding support actually start? So generally, breastfeeding support starts when the woman is pregnant in the mm -hmm. antenatal period. Mm -hmm. So during the antenatal period, she undergoes about maybe 8 to 12 visits with either her midwife or her gynecologist. Mm -hmm. During this time, she is given information about how to care for her breast, the changes that happen in her breast while she's pregnant, um, what secretions she may see. She may see things like um, colostrum, which is the first stage of the development of breast milk. Okay. And so as she goes through the process, mm -hmm. she is not surprised as to what is happening to her. So she gets that breastfeeding support even from the antenatal period. And this continues for at least about six months where the baby is supposed to only get breast milk during this period. Okay, all right. Now, in your opinion, why, why do you see breastfeeding support as being so important? Okay, so breastfeeding is usually a new thing to most mothers. Okay. And even those who are breastfed, there's, um, you still learn along the process, right. okay? Now, in the first stages of giving birth, you go through a period where your hormones are out of place or you feel overwhelmed, you have a new baby, and so forth. And so most times, persons want to resort to the, most, the easiest way out is mm -hmm. to give a bottle of formula. Right. However, this woman at this point, she's vulnerable she is her emotions are all over the place so you need to strengthen mm -hmm. and to improve on her self-confidence to let her know that you can do this okay. all right mm -hmm. um also it helps her to reach her breastfeeding goals okay. meaning that in the first stage of giving birth the postpartum period mm -hmm. the breast may not make enough or may not may not make all the milk that you expected to make at the time mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so the woman needs to know that the first stage there's the colostrum, it might not be too much, it might be scanty, but mm -hmm. that's exactly what the baby needs and that's the right amount. Okay. And so it's, it's a process where you continue to encourage them, let them know what's, what's happening, to strengthen their confidence so that they can trust that they're doing a good job mm -hmm. or they will get there. And mm -hmm. so it's more or less to motivate them and to keep them going. Okay. Now we're, we're mentioning a lot of um, positives about what can come from be breastfeeding support, but in your experience, have you ever seen what could happen if a lady doesn't get that, that support that she needs at that time? Huh. Several times I've noticed when a woman does not get that support, um, what happens is that she has a breakdown okay. or, or she goes okay. through postpartum depression. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, anyone who receives support, no matter what stage they are in life, when mm -hmm. you get support, it kind of helps you to balance your emotions, to have a positive outlook on life mm -hmm. and so forth. And so those women who don't get that support, they give up. They may not even want to see the baby because they are stressed out mm -hmm. and they're blaming everybody for what's happening to them. And the first thing they resort to is to give formula. And we know that the best food for the baby mm -hmm. in the first six months of life is breast milk. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. And so because of that, the woman needs the support so that she can initiate the breastfeeding, she can continue the breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. And so as she goes through this breastfeeding journey, yeah. she's supported every step of the way. Okay. All right. Now, you, you mentioned um, certain people that might actually be able to aid um, the new mother with um, breastfeeding support. Can you go into more detail about what these different people might be able to do for the mother? Oh, yes. So the breastfeeding support is, pro is provided by a team. When right. I say a team, I mean it's not just the midwife. It's mm -hmm. the midwife, her partner, her family members, the physician in her life, um, the nutritionist, um, the mental health practitioners, mm -hmm. um, persons who are always there for her to support her, to encourage her. These mm -hmm. people form part of the team. Right. And each of these people pay, play a pivotal role in encouraging her and keeping her on that breastfeeding journey. Mm -hmm. So. As I mentioned earlier, the midwife and the physician will, at this point in the antenatal period, start off by telling her about the benefits of breastfeeding, mm -hmm. how to care for her breasts, how to put the baby onto the breast in mm -hmm. terms of latching onto the breast. Mm -hmm. um, the physician will do the same thing. Also, you have persons like lactation specialists who will also encourage her to breastfeed and tell her the components of breast milk and how it's going to benefit the baby, how to breastfeed, and so forth. The nutritionist is also on board to provide her information about how breastfeeding is going to benefit the baby in terms of the nutritional value of breastfeeding and um, why is she not supposed to add any water to the diet at this point because breast milk, as we know, is about almost 90% purely water. Mm -hmm. And so because of that, the woman would have to get additional support throughout the process. So persons like the mental health practitioner would be responsible for guiding her through the process in mm -hmm. terms of encouraging her so that she don't go into this postpartum depression that we speak about. Mm -hmm. And also, they, several studies have proven that breastfeeding also protects a woman from having postpartum depression. Okay. So all of these um, persons on board, as well as her partner and her family members, mm -hmm. will come on board, will also be there to assist in the chores, mm -hmm. um, give her a chance to take a longer nap by feeding the baby, mm -hmm. attending the visits with her as well, attending the antenatal visits, the postnatal visits to be there as a support person for her right. also the father can decide to take paternity leave around that time mm -hmm. so that he can be there for her mm -hmm. during the time where she's most vulnerable where her emotions are all over the place and mm -hmm. she's losing on sleep and she's feeling tired and she's wondering am I am I doing this right mm -hmm. especially if this is a new mother mm -hmm. and so all these people from part of the team to ensure that she gets the support that she needs to s initiate breastfeeding mm -hmm. and to continue breastfeeding, especially exclusive breastfeeding. Okay, brilliant. Now, you, you mentioned one person there that I, I didn't even, I wasn't aware, and I've had two children, I, I wasn't aware of a lactation specialist. That's the first time I've actually ever heard that, I'm sorry, but it is. Um, tell me more about a lactation specialist and what their role can be, because you, you, you talked about um, telling them how to, you know, get the baby to latch onto the breast and such like, but in more detail, what does a lactation specialist actually do? And where, as a new mother, can I find out or even garner information from this person? Huh. Unfortunately, I don't think this um, position exists in the Ministry of Health. Okay. <laughs> so, but this person, their role, would, their role basically would entail assisting the mother mm -hmm. in learning about breast development, okay. what happens as the breast develops so that it can produce breast milk. Mm -hmm. They would tell her about the components of the breast milk. Mm -hmm. They'll also assist her in attaching the baby onto the breast. Right. Um, the different positions to tell her how to care for her breast mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. um, be there to encourage her to, you know, to let her know when she's doing well. And they're also available. Um, they, you can call them when you're having difficulty in getting the baby to latch onto the breast. And they basically specialize in that area to deal with breastfeeding okay. and allowing the baby to get that that, that good food, that, yeah. as we say it, yeah. the breast milk that they need, and also to help the mother to know that, you know, it's a journey. Yes. yes. It will start rough, but mm -hmm. you will get there. Mm -hmm. Because at this point, the woman starts with learning. Mm -hmm. Then she starts to get it. Mm -hmm. And then she eventually starts to thrive. And so she's able to do it on her own. And even sometimes it may be that she may think that she gets it, and mm -hmm. then she may go back into frustration because mm -hmm. maybe today the baby didn't want to take the breast and she's depressed. Oh, he was taking the, the breast yesterday and today he's not taking it. So mm -hmm. the lactation specialist is also there that when she needs this person to guide and support her, will be there to do that. Okay, brilliant. Now you also um, touched on the, the, the partner and, and the family. What words of encouragement would, or would you, um, as a person in the profession, actually give to um, family members and such like in regards to helping the new mother in regards to um, breastfeeding support? Very good question. Well, as we know, 
anything you do, you cannot do it alone. Mm -hmm. Especially a, a woman who has just given birth, she's vulnerable and she needs help. And so anybody in her life, it, it may not be her partner, it may be a family member, it may be a best friend, it may be a neighbor mm -hmm. who can assist, I would encourage you to be there for this woman. This is a time when she's, she, she, she wants to know that she, she's supported, that she's, she's um, getting the information that she needs so that she can continue to breastfeed. And mm -hmm. when you are there for her, so while she's getting the inf information from the midwife, the midwife is not at home with her. So she has her family members, her friends who are there to help her along the way. So I'm encouraging anybody who knows somebody who has given birth, who's, who wants to breastfeed, to offer your help. Mm -hmm. as, the, as, as this person, do you need any help? I am there for you. Um, whatever you need me to do, um, I can come and hold the baby so that you can take a bath. Mm -hmm. I, can, I can come and wash the dishes so that you can take a little lo a, a longer nap mm -hmm. during this time. So whatever, no matter how small you may think that the help is, mm -hmm. it is important. Okay, all right. I too, when, 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 when I had given birth to my son, I was very fortunate to have had my husband around mm -hmm. and my mom around. Mm -hmm. And so I got this opportunity to, yeah. to sleep a little longer during yes. the day. Yeah. And I didn't have to worry about where my meal was coming from. Mm -hmm. And so I, pers I have personal experience with this type of support. Yeah. And this, <laughs> I, I, I cannot overemphasize how this helped me along the way, even as yeah. a nurse, teaching persons about breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. And when it was my turn now, I started to feel the feelings of overwhelm that yeah. the patients yes. experience. Yeah. And so because I had that support, mm -hmm. I was able to go through the journey and to breastfeed my son mm -hmm. exclusively for six months and beyond, and I'm still breastfeeding. Right, right. That's brilliant. And, and to be quite honest, I'm, I'm glad you said that because what I find that a lot of people don't even um, realize at times when they're not the person going through it is that when you are experiencing this new thing and you don't get the support it's even harder for you to even make the milk because you're so stressed you're so you know so it, it's a fantastic thing very if you have well that said and yeah. because stress also impedes the production of breast milk and so some mothers will tell you my breast aren't making enough milk and then you ask them are you stressed out yeah uh, um when you're breastfeeding are you relaxed because you need to be in a comfortable chair, yeah. your feet need to be up, mm -hmm. you need to have those good hormones going through your body. And anytime you are stressed out, you have hormones that will counteract the good hormones. And so prolactin mm -hmm. will be diminished. Mm -hmm. And so because of that, the production of breast milk will be limited. Right, and so the yeah. baby will not get enough and the baby will continue to be fussy and you now frustrated and the cycle continues. And yeah. so the support is important so yeah. that the woman can feel that you know, I can do this thing and the body will respond naturally and the milk will just let down. Brilliant. Well, Nestanko, we're just going to take a little break now. And when we come back, we'll carry on with our conversation about breastfeeding and support. We'll be right back. We are working parents. And we breastfed both babies exclusively. I have six years, I have all the teeth, all the teeth are good cereal. Mother's breast milk is naturally the best milk for baby. Love yourself and love your baby. We were breastfed and we are healthy. Breastfeeding saves me money and it's free. Every moment I breastfeed strengthens the bond between me and my baby. I breastfed twin boys and lost all my baby fat. We were breastfed! And we have breast milk power. I am Pastor Alvin and I support breastfeeding. For more information, call the Nutrition Unit of the Ministry of Health and Wellness at 468-5359. Welcome back. Um, welcome back to interview. I'm here today with Nurse Duncan and we are talking about breastfeeding support. Now before we went to the break, Nurse Duncan, again we were talking about um, the ways that family members can help out with, um, with breastfeeding support. However, the last interview I know I did um, with uh, a, a, another nurse, we were talking about the work situation. How would you say that the work situation could offer support to um, breastfeeding mothers? Okay, so first of all, most women fall off the bandwagon because they have to return to work before the six months that is recommended. Right. And so before she goes to work, I would recommend that the woman would speak with her supervisor or her manager to let her know that, okay, I'm a breastfeeding mom, mm -hmm. and when I come back to work, I want to continue breastfeeding my baby. And so I would appreciate it 
if you would give me maybe some time in the day if I could go and express my breast milk mm -hmm. or maybe they can bring the baby in at a point in time mm -hmm. during the work experience mm -hmm. and so it's a partnership so most women fall off the bandwagon because they don't feel like they will get that form of support at work that right. persons would think that, okay, she needs too many breaks and she's taking too many breaks. And so, mm -hmm. and because of that, that also affects how she thinks about breastfeeding and that will also diminish her production. So yeah. most women, when they go back to work, mm -hmm. their production usually diminish. Mm -hmm. But we want them to refocus and reframe their thinking and let them know that if you have a good communication relationship with your supervisor, mm -hmm. your workplace um, manager, this person can come aboard, on board as a supportive person by giving you the time to mm -hmm. breastfeed as well as the time to express, also making a room available for you. Yeah. Because I know right now maybe most workplaces do not have this breastfeeding room or if there is any back room or room that is conducive that can be that she can get a comfortable chair mm -hmm. she can get a sink to wash her hands afterwards mm -hmm. and if there is a fridge at work make a fridge available to her to store that breast milk until she's mm -hmm. ready to leave mm -hmm. um, all of this is a way that the workplace can support the woman in continuing to breastfeed and so we as the infant and young child feeding committee we mm -hmm. these are one of the areas that we want to tackle to meet with the managers of businesses to sensitize them about the benefits of breastfeeding and okay. they might say okay this woman may have to take so much time from work because she's breastfeeding but studies have shown that breastfeeding mothers the fact that they feel supported there's mm -hmm. less absenteeism right and so they come to work mm -hmm. and then they do their work and then they just take a few minutes to go express their milk but if mm -hmm. they figure you know what i don't get a chance to express they'll call in sick and say you know what i can't come to work today mm -hmm. and so the support is almost like it it fosters increase in production because this person feels comfortable to be at work mm -hmm. they will do their work to the best of their ability and mm -hmm. still get to meet the needs of their the baby by meeting their breastfeeding goals that's so important that's so important yeah brilliant okay um also can you just give me especially for like new mothers young mothers who have never been through the experience before. Now, if they want um, certain information and certain support or even certain guidance in regards to breastfeeding, just go down the, the different people that they can contact. We kind of touched on it before, but like who, for what, for like certain topics and certain things they're going through, who would be the different individuals for those certain things? Like for instance, health and nutrition, who would they really see about that? Uh -oh. Who are the different people that will okay, take on the different so, roles? Um, in the community nursing sector, as well as primary health care, there are a number of specialists that we have. Mm -hmm. So you have, first of all, you have the midwife. This is the right. first person that this person may end up meeting in terms of when she's pregnant to give her the kind of information that she would need in terms of um, breast development during this period, how mm -hmm. to care for the breast, the type of bras that she needs to wear to support the breast. Right. Um, also, how is milk produced in the breast, the first stages of milk production. Mm -hmm. And so at this stage, the midwife or her gynecologist would provide that information at this stage. Mm -hmm. Now, throughout the antenatal stage, she's also referred to several specialists along the way. Mm -hmm. So you have the nutritionist, mm -hmm. and every health region has a nutritionist. And so this antenatal client is referred to the nutrition nutritionist, would also encourage her to eat properly, eat mm -hmm. the right amount of foods, the mm -hmm. right type of foods, get all the nutrients that she needs, because these nutrients is what is going to be translated into the breast milk so that the baby can get the right amount of nutrients. And so when we say breast milk is a complete balanced diet, we mean yeah. that the nutrition that a woman um, has during antenatal would also be continued when she gives birth, mm -hmm. which, which is what translates into the breast milk so that the baby can get the nutrients that the baby needs. Right. Also, the woman is also referred to the mental health practitioner or mental health social worker mm -hmm. who also does an assessment of her mental faculties to see whether she's coping with this pregnancy, mm -hmm. whether she's at risk for getting postpartum depression. Mm -hmm. And any time a woman gets depression, you know, the emotions affect the production of breast milk. And so several specialists are involved in the care of that woman so that even before she gives birth, the support starts from that stage. Okay, brilliant. Okay. Now, also, well, something that I, 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 I never really thought of myself before, so I don't know if you'll be able to go into it for me a little bit. There's um, certain factors that could actually affect women in regards that would, that would warrant them needing support. Now, one of the things that I noticed that was actually down on, on some information I was reading is that embarrassment. How would you say that would actually factor in? Okay, so embarrassment there would come in the form where some people don't believe that women are supposed to breastfeed in public. Ah, okay. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Mm -hmm. because of that, a woman mm -hmm. may need to go out. Yeah. And 
she may know that you know I need to feed my baby, yes. but because she knows how it's going to be looked upon, mm -hmm. she may end up carrying it for a, a bottle of formula, yeah. and so that breaks the mm -hmm. cycle of mm -hmm. the exclusive breastfeeding, mm -hmm. and so it depends on the society that the woman you know yeah. lives in yeah. some societies look down on women who feed in public yes or some may encourage it by saying you know what the baby is hungry feed the baby that's there's nothing wrong with that so yeah. and also some women are embarrassed about their breasts mm -hmm. how their breasts look mm -hmm. so to put out your breasts mm -hmm. where persons can maybe see part of your breasts and so forth they may not want to do that mm -hmm. so all of that embarrassment can you know play on her mind and that affects whether she continues to breastfeed mm -hmm. or it also affects her production, mm -hmm. her breast milk production. Okay, something that you said that just, just made me think of something because um, how hard would you say it is? I mean, people, under, people know that people have children, women have children every day and they have to feed their, their, their children and it's breastfeeding that. That, that. That's the initial thing. So, but how hard do you think it is to try and make people understand the importance? Now, I'm not talking about the mothers themselves, but just the lay person. Because for some reason, as you say, that there, there always seems to be some kind of stigma be behind when people have to think about mothers have to just do the natural thing and, and feed their, their, and that's their, it. Their, their, their children. And I'm so happy that you said it's a natural yes. thing. Yes. Because when your breast gets full, mm -hmm. you feel it. So it's not to say like it's something bad happening to you. It's something natural. Yeah, yeah. So in order for that, for you to get that relaxation from your breast or that release, you have to feed the baby. Mm -hmm. And it may mean that it may have to happen on a bus. Mm -hmm. It may mean that it may happen, have to happen at a bus stop, mm -hmm. you know, or, or maybe in a store, mm -hmm. you know, because when the baby needs milk, they need milk no matter where you are. Yeah, yeah. And so the public needs to understand that breastfeeding is a natural process. Right. And you know how much money that saves the country when women breastfeed? Yeah. So it's a benefit to not just the mother, it's a benefit to the country, to mm -hmm. the society, because breast, breast milk is natural. Right. There's no pollution when you breastfeed. Exactly. You know? Yeah. And, and we talk about going green yeah. and all of these things. And so we don't realize that some of the practices that God has already designed for, you know, it's natural. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and I don't know how many people accept it or the percentage of persons who reject it or have stigma towards it. Mm -hmm. But I would encourage somebody who is looking at breastfeeding as something that is a hindrance to look at it so, as something that is beneficial to the society, to the mother, right. to the family. Mm -hmm. Everybody around benefits from breastfeeding. Yeah, because exactly. the, 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 the teachers in the long run will benefit from breastfeeding because they have brighter students. Yeah. The IQ of children, yes. children who breastfeed yeah. are higher than those who, who mm -hmm. take formula, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. we cannot overemphasize how important breastfeeding is, yeah. especially exclusive breastfeeding. Okay, brilliant, okay. Um, can we now discuss um, some breastfeeding support groups? Because I know you have those, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So breastfeeding support groups, this involves women who are on the same stage of their breastfeeding journey. They meet in an informal setting mm -hmm. and they discuss, you know, what they've been going through throughout that breastfeeding journey. Those okay. who have problems with breastfeeding would mm -hmm. share with others what they do to help their product, to increase their production. Mm -hmm. Those who, um, who, um, want to know more about okay what to do when your when your breast is engorged mm -hmm. they learn about that during that mm -hmm. experience mm -hmm. also in these groups you sometimes specialists visit the groups okay. and then they also give them information new mm -hmm. information and share with them how to mm -hmm. and the benefits of breastfeeding and mm -hmm. so it's, it's an informal setting where women with similar characteristics yeah. and at the same stage of breastfeeding they meet and they discuss everything related to breastfeeding yeah. the type yeah. of bra you yeah. wear um yeah. what happens when you're when your breast is not making enough milk and mm -hmm. so it's just where they get a chance to vent yes yes yeah, so just yeah. to relax and then to just talk about what's happening with their bodies during okay. that period and i'm so happy to hear that though there are groups like that because for some reason when you're, you're a new mother and you're it's not so much you're isolated but you're, you're getting to terms of your you're, you're getting to know your child and such like you're kind of away from people and such like so when things start going wrong you start thinking, is there something wrong with me? Exactly. Am I doing it wrong? Right. And it's so good to hear that everybody else is going, really going for the same thing yes, I'm going through. Yes. That is such a positive thing when you're able to share it that. It is. It yeah, is because there yeah. are persons who have gone before you as well. So, so some women may also revert to women who probably have breastfed before as well. Mm -hmm. And so that's also part of their support team yes, to tell them, you yes. know, when my breast was engorged, this is what I did. Mm -hmm, and it mm -hmm, helped. Mm -hmm. And so they know that they are not alone in this. Okay, cool. Now, are there other ways that, that women can actually get breastfeeding support as well? Well, um, breastfeeding support can come um, in the form of you watch an online video mm -hmm. about 
what breastfeeding is. Because mm -hmm. we're now in the technological world. Everything right. is online, everything is available at your fingertips. Mm -hmm. And so you have persons who create blogs, persons who create Facebook pages to talk about breastfeeding and their journey, mm -hmm. you know. Or some countries have talked about having things like um, a helpline, a 24-hour helpline. Okay. So in the middle of the night, you get up and you have a problem with breastfeeding and you can just take the phone oh, wow. and call okay. and say, you know what, what should I do? Mm -hmm, and so mm -hmm. we have not reached there yet. Yeah, I'm hoping yeah. that we can get, <laughs> get there, there yeah. right? Mm -hmm. But um, things like um, having a lactation specialist on board, mm -hmm. we don't have that yet. And mm -hmm. so we're looking forward to having those kinds of, of specialists on board okay. and so on. And we're also looking forward to having our breast breast friend breast feeding sorry mm -hmm. friendly hospitals okay. and so we are now in the process of starting the training for that mm -hmm. so that we can get our hospitals certified mm -hmm. so that when a baby is born everybody knows that the only food that a baby is supposed to get mm -hmm. is breast milk mm -hmm. okay? okay and so all of this is part of the the the, the activities that can initiate a woman help a woman initiate breastfeeding mm -hmm. and continue breastfeeding and so provide the support that she needs okay well, Ms. Duncan, this has been a fantastic um, conversation that we've had today. But it's no time to wrap up. But before I go, um, what would I would just again, because I mean, I've done, I've asked you two before, but what are words that, some words of encouragement that you would give out to the nation in regards to breastfeeding support and just helping young women along the way? Okay, I would like to let the public know that breastfeeding is a public health issue. It affects right. every single part of the economy mm -hmm. as well as every single person. And the benefits of breastfeeding outweighs any other disadvantage that you'd even think of. Maybe mm -hmm. the woman might be thinking of, okay, my breast is going to get very large and it's mm -hmm. going to fall. But think of the benefits that your child is going to get in the long run. Yeah. Think of the benefits that the, the country is going to experience. So um, we would have um, a decline in diabetes mm -hmm. because women are, more women are do practicing exclusive breastfeeding. And so that saves the country in spending money on medication for diabetes. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have less pollution, less um, cans of formula around the place in the garbage bins and in the, in the drains mm -hmm. and, all, on, and all of these areas. Mm -hmm. Also, um, the benefits for the woman as well. It saves her so much money. So that money that she's going to spend on buying formula, she can use that to buy maybe clothes for the baby mm -hmm, or maybe mm -hmm. take the baby to the next appointment. Mm -hmm. And so the, the funds for the family can be redirect, redirected to more important aspects as opposed to spending money on food right. for that baby, which breast milk is free, mm -hmm, you know? Mm -hmm. So I want to encourage them to let them know that um, breastfeeding reduces the burden on society yeah. in several ways. And so if you see a woman who is pregnant or you know a woman who is pregnant and who's ready to give birth, encourage her to breastfeed. You know, sensitize her to the benefits of breastfeeding and let her know that she's going to save so much money. Things are difficult. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, no matter what pay grade that you are in, yeah. things are difficult for yeah, everybody. everybody. And so if you can save money for the entire six months of life to save yourself from buying formula or mm -hmm. buying juices and all of these things that the baby doesn't yeah. need, mm -hmm. I would encourage you and also encourage the public to encourage their friends and family to breastfeed because it's the best food for the baby at that stage. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. As I said, it's all, it has been a wonderful conversation. Thank you so much for having me. I really enjoyed it. Okay, brilliant. Well, thank you for tuning in and being a part of interview today. However, it's time for me, Jolene B. Seth Joseph, to say bye-bye. Take care.